Italia. Speaking of Italia, I used to do a song with the old man himself, oh. Ario Dante de Antilio, yes, entitled La Gentemi Cantare, of which I remember the La first two words. La Gentemi Cantare. I remember that song. Yeah, that's all I got, folks. Heard that Dutch Wigman out times. there, good to see you, Dutch. Gosh. All right. So without further ado, mm. um, we're going to do this song. Because like I say, $5 Friday, 10 different items marked down, some of them rather drastically. Yeah. I think the uh, Kanjo book download is like half off or something like that. Right. So some pretty good discounts in the lead up to what is, of course, the holiday buying season. For some of us, we're already in the midst of it. Some of us are waiting a little bit longer to begin such things. Glenn Watts, some all of your Christmas shopping done? Some of us may refrain from beginning oh, at all. Wow. Yeah, just one of those kind of, one of those people. Boycotting. Right. Yeah, one of those people that you don't want as your secret Santa, folks. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you this card. All right, so we're going to do, uh, I think of it as Alan Jackson's song, Little Bitty, but he didn't write it. No. Tom I think it was Tom T. Hall. Yeah. He's written a lot of great songs. That's what I understand. I mean, I'm not a Tom T. Hall aficionado, but from what I've read, he has, uh, he has written and composed a, a number of songs, all with this like storytelling that people really appreciate. Yeah, quite the songsmith. Yeah. Those of us who have written a song or two can as aspire to such heights. And like that's, that's quite a height to aspire to. And quite a low with Alan Jackson's voice, for whatever that's worth. Yeah, we're, we're kicking it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. alright, a little bitty. In the key of D. D it up. I'm on the hobo fiddle, three string GDG, Glenn Watt on the G bass, G. tuned G D. Got a little love on a little honeymoon. You got a little dish and you got a little spoon. Little bitty house and a little bitty yard. Little bitty dog and a little bitty car. It's alright. A little bitty in your hometown of a big old city. Might as well share, might as well smile. Life goes on for a little bitty while. There it is. <laughs> Here we go. A little bitty baby in a little bitty gown. It'll grow up in a little bitty town. Big yellow bus and a little bitty books. It all started with a little bitty book. It's alright. Smile. Well, thank you for sitting through that. Thank you. It is a good song. And I Kirk would... Otto out, was out there saying that he likes the song. I also do Kirk Otto. It's one of those, it's actually one of the tunes that really, I mean, I've always coming in and out of country music over my adult years, uh, but that's uh, Alan Jackson or Tom T. Hall's Little Bitty is one that really, one of the few that really hooked me in and drew me more into country music where I am now. So, good yeah. stuff. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it, right? Well, we know Kurt did. Hopefully everybody else did. <laughs> uh, actually, there's a number of Alan Jackson songs that have always been favorites of mine, like Living on Love and the one, what's the one about uh, Daddy teaching you to drive, you know, the old truck and the, the boat. Hey, there's a bunch of, a lot of good Storytelling in country music is un, uh, some, sometimes underappreciated, I think. Yeah. Speaking of country music, a brief note to say that Roy Clark... 
passed away yesterday. You know, he, he was probably best known for his comedic role on Hee Haw, but that man was a, a absolute virtuoso. Ooh. Pretty much anything with strings. Guitar, of course, he's probably best known for. Banjo, mandolin, like, he could just wail on... Shred. On, on everything. Yeah. And funny... I actually, I didn't get to meet him. I got to see him once. Three years ago down at the NAM show, the Summer NAM show in Nashville, they were doing a awards thing. The Grand Ole Opry was there, and Vince Gill and uh, Emmy Lou Harris got to see them sing and do a duet together. That was nice. But then they got old Roy Clark up there to give him a lifetime achievement thing, and he sang and played something or other, and it was nice. That was cool. It was nice. That was cool. Then we went out, had a couple of beers, and no, that part didn't happen. I wish it did. <laughs> Oh, Roy Clark started on Cigar Box Guitar. Well, there is a story about that. Cigar Box Nation and the man behind it there, Mr. Shane Spiel, knows many stories of such things. But yeah, I believe it's published somewhere in interviews where he talked about, did he build it himself, Shane, or did his daddy build him for him, or something like that. One of those good old stories of a, a true musical genius starting on mm. a homemade instrument, which, of course, warms my heart, and I know probably many of yours as well. Glenn, hot, Glenn what? Your heart warm? Hot. Hot. Oh, it's hot. I can feel the Just heat from here. Good hot. Lord. All right. Good stuff. So, we can go into Walk Corner right now. Let's do it up. All right. Let's get it going. It is time. Now it's time for Walk Corner. Hey-o! Now, every moment I see that you're requesting uh, Snowblind by Bla I Presumably, you're requesting from us. The Giddy Gang, Snowblinds by Black gonna Sabbath. Be, gonna be this guy I over don't, here. Yeah, I'm I don't not, even know that one. I don't even, I don't never even know heard Sabbath that well, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, as much of a metalhead as I am, yeah. Sabbath really wasn't on the list, to be honest. Yeah, Crazy that, Train. Crazy Train. There's yeah. some good stuff that's in that. That's not Sabbath, is it? That's, Iron Man. Yeah. That's, that's Sabbath. Sabbath? Okay, I don't want to get off too... Uh, I, I want to just... But for clarity, I think Crazy Train was Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> with a guitarist, Randy Rhodes, but that's another story, so... See, this guy knows his stuff. I'm He's old. He's the one to do it. I'm old. Anyways, welcome to Walk Corner, where we share things that you've shared with us, and then we share them again. No, share, share, share. Uh, but seriously, when, uh, so when you... Oh, Sorry, you're right. Oh, there you go. Cool. When you... Uh, thank you, whomever clarified that. No, I was Nancy Leanne, I may get the beard back, but it's... More or less gonna happen when hey, I lose the hair up top. I'm doing my guy. part over here. Look, oh, this guy. I will shave November. Look at this guy. But I, uh, well, four or this five is... more weeks, I'll have something that passes for a dead rat on my face. Aw. Yeah, it's sad. It's hot. Anyway, walk so, corner. Walk corner. So, first up, we have from Ron M. Ron M. I, uh, this picture of Ron, and basically what Ron wrote in was he started out what what you see him wearing. Uh, first of all, I love this picture for three reasons, probably more than three, but one, Ron, because you're out, if you're out there when you see this or if you see this, Ron, it's because it's a picture of you and you're smiling, and I like that. And I like your shirt, and I like your guitar, and I like the whole thing, so thank you for sharing that with us because I'm glad to have it here. And uh, what Ron has, as you will see, or as I'm about to describe, is a steampunked guitar. And many, some of you, are, maybe all of you, are already familiar with what steampunk is. I'm not going to get too far into the definition. It's kind of like a, a fantasy Victorian era type look. Anybody want to throw that out? Yes. All right, thank you. But um, so he's done that with his cigar box guitar. And he writes that it's been his third build. And somewhere along, along the line, he realized he could steampunk it, which is cool. And... Uh, he ends his little note with, so it's actually a continuous work in progress. And this is the third reason why I love this photo. It's because he cites that, this continuous work in progress. And some of you, maybe all of you, maybe only a few of you out there have a guitar that you come back to, that you've changed the tuners on, or you've added some wood burning, or you've done something different to it. And because it's unlike a conventional guitar, which you go out to Guitar Warehouse and drop $2,000 on or $700 on, oh, sure. these little you know, 50, 100, 200, you know, whatever it is that you spend on your guitars, your cigar box guitars that you make, you can come back to them and, and continually personalize them or make adjustments or just do whatever that you want with them in order to, to fit your desires. And I really appreciate that about these instruments, and I appreciate you, Ron, for citing that, so thank you. Next up, we have Bart B. Got a few photos from Bart B. And me spittling a lot here, excuse me. <laughs> you know, because it's rainy outside, I'm also spittle. Post, don't yeah. worry. Yeah. <laughs> 
Bart B's got this guitar. I'm gonna hold it on this if you don't mind, Nick. I'm sorry, because I, I, and Nick's dealing with a ton of images that, from me today, so I'll try to get through them quick, and you won't have to listen to me talk. But here's Bart B's guitar, and you can see there, one of the things I really enjoy is that uh, Cigar Box Nation wooden laser cut Ooh. sound hole cover. Very nice, by the way, Bart B. And Bart writes about this guitar, and I'll, if we can stay on this image real quick, is Bart writes that he was frustrated by slide fret knocking. So you're playing with a slide on a fretted guitar, and that sometimes that slide knocks against the frets. Maybe that's a subject we can get into at another time or today. Uh, but nonetheless, he was frustrated by that sound, so he made a guitar with a removable fretboard. Now, the, so if actually, if you don't mind going to the next image, Nick, you'll see here, uh, as Bart B describes, that the notch in the nut holds the fretboard down. Can you go to the next image too, Nick? I'm sorry. And so you can see as you kind of wiggle it out there. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see, especially on a mobile device, but you just have to bear with me here. There's a little notch on the end of the fretboard that fits underneath the notch in the nut, which is just nifty. And I, there's a whole lot of things people can pipe up with, say, you know, some challenges that something like this faces. But what I appreciate is that Bart B took some time to address an issue that he felt was bothering him. So this is what his solution is, and I really dig it. This is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's just, it's just awesome. nifty, right. And so he goes on to write, is there another image of this, or a last one? Yes, okay. So if we can keep it on this one, because this helps may help support this last bit that he writes in. He's, he writes that the notch that it holds, down, holds the fretboard down. Now he has short fret marker dowels coated in beeswax for friction, inserted through the fretboard and into the neck to secure the fretboard nicely. So he's got these little removable dowels, and they're coated with beeswax, puts them in through the fretboard, into the neck, it holds the fretboard down. Now the next time that he does this, writes Brett, Bart, excuse me, he will cut the wider notches in the neck that you see there. You see those lines? He wants to cut those notches wider where the frets would be if he turns the fretboard over. Oh, so it takes it and turns it over, oh, puts dear. it back onto the neck. And I was like, that's just rad. So man. that's just fun stuff, Bart. Being like, kid stuff, yeah, right? man. And it's just little innovations or little things to test to push the boundaries. Well, the guys are saying magnets. Embed magnets in there. That's, that's a great idea. I just got some rare earth magnet discs that, yeah, that's that'd an be awesome. awesome. That's an awesome idea. It's just fun little things like that. And I know he, Bart's not the first guy to do this. I'm not just that somebody is taking the time to do something like this and sharing it. Hopefully, someone out there who sees this, whether you're in the comments or not, is inspired by it. I know that I have been. So thank you very much, Bart B. Next up, we've got Drew F. And I'm excited because you're going to see this rad little thing here. I think we, can, we may have a video of it being played later. But what you see here is from Drew F. A Frethead Tennis Racket Guitar. Now you can see that uh, looks like a musical instrument. In the next image, what's underneath there? What's underneath there? We got. Uh, I want to show you the headstock first, looking down, because that's always a fun shot. I like that, like that little racy look. But in the next image, Nick has for you what we what we can see is a hard hat underneath the tennis racket to put. Put, make that uh, resonator bounce that sound back out. Love it. Hard hat with a preamp in it. Yeah, and he's got a little equal Good. yeah preamp Lord. on there, and that you saw, possibly saw in the first image. He has a, a rail runner uh, bridge that we sell here that we make here. It's a has a little rod piezo underneath the brass bar. And thank you, awesome Nick. Thank you. And uh, and it runs into the preamp, and he therefore has an electrified tennis racket guitar with a hard hat body to make a resonator. I love it. So really good stuff, Drew F. I'm glad you shared that with with us. So thank you very much. Really great. Like, it's like the homemade version of the old bull back mandolins. Yeah. You know, it, right. Wicked hard to hold, but look cool. Yeah, they, <laughs> super cool. And, and hopefully you'll hear uh, how cool it sounds a little bit in a little bit. Now next up we have Brian W. And Brian writes that uh, I know that I know that this image is really distant again, especially on a mobile device. But bear with me, especially for the for those of you on desktops. The reason I wanted to share this is because this particular thing that we sell here, that we make here and sell here, it doesn't get enough attention, I think. And that is these acrylic, or that are these, that is these, acrylic fretboard uh, underlays. And that's what Brian W. has on this three string that he says that he made with almost entirely CBGD parts. Ooh. The acrylic fretboard with the underlay looks amazing and the preamp sounds awesome. So I wanted to, to display this for two different reasons. Aside from the re fact that he calls it incredibly fun to play and that he absolutely loves it. Thank you, Brian W. for sharing it then. But he's got a rail runner bridge on there as well. He's got the preamp, just like the tennis racket guitar, but that fretboard underlay has this like really, uh, I don't uh, I don't want to use the word, but I use the word trippy kind of like look to it. Uh, it's really neat. We have these, again, these acrylic underboards, uh, uh, 
acrylic fretboard covers and like these underlays with these pictures that you can see the acrylic through the acrylic. And I, I they don't get enough love, I don't think, on this show for me. So I just want to share that from Brian. So thank you very much. And that's underlay. Underlay. Not underlay. Underlay. Yeah, uh, welcome to New England, where I drop all my R's. Now, uh, Tom K. Uh, Tom K. Up next, he's got uh, an electric three-string washboard guitar. Again, I know you've seen something like this before, but not Tom's. And I really enjoy Tom's because he's using an, a three-pole electric Delta oh, pickup from us. Look at that. Yeah. And what's really nifty about it, something that I haven't seen myself, is that and it's not shown here on the back of Tom K.'s guitar. He's built. He built a box to fit on the back, not only to house the neck and the electronics, but also to make much like the hard hat on the backside of the tennis racket, but that box then gives a resonator to the washboard. So otherwise, you would have you know just a straight washboard and a neck and a pickup and you can plug it in, awesome stuff. But now with this custom built box in the backside that fits it perfectly, you also have a, a verifiable uh, acoustic instrument as well, and is I really there, dig it. Is there a photo of the back? There was not, I'm, ah. sorry to, I'm sorry to say. But, so thank you, Tom K. Next up, Gary R. And uh, I'm just, I wanted to share this for a moment, have a quiet moment, because I think it's rad. Yeah, I really do. Gary R. writes that he used a, used a number of parts from CB Giddy on this one, thank you. And uh, he also likes the to distress the box, box that he builds with and add images. And that's something that I think that we're going to address a little bit later today, because the guy I know also likes to add images to boxes, and I think it's a great idea to, again, customize, make these instruments your own. It's something that I won't do myself, and I, the fact that you all will take that, or some of you all will take the time to do that, I think is really cool. So thank you, Gary. I think this is a really nice looking guitar. Next up, James N., another cool looking guitar with a bearded skull CBG. Part of the reason I'm so excited about this is because I've never seen a bearded skull, but here is one on a box. Yeah. So now James N. writes in, Bearded Skull CBG has a gloss black body, ebony stained neck, and a natural finished fretboard, all with four coats of lacquer. Or lacquer, if you live lacquer. elsewhere in the country. I lacquer. I know of. Hi! This is his third CBG, he writes, but the first one uh, that he's taken time on and did as right as he knew how. That is really important to me. Uh, it, would, it took seven days to build, working after work a few hours each night, and one good Saturday and Sunday. And that's the thing, is like, I'm prone to, when building at home, to rush, I just jam a stick in a box, make a few cuts, throw some tuners on, get some strings on there, and I have a guitar. And I'm happy with it. But I know that the, t the, the times of my life, and I love this paint job that you put on there, James, and with the bearded skull, uh, the times of my life where I've really s taken my time with something to, to, to spend some, you know, enjoy the process and to really look forward to the end result, I've been really pleased. Uh, more so than just normally with my uh, jam a stick through the box type method. So that's really good stuff, James. And thank you very much. Next up, uh, who else we got there? Ah, uh, you're out there, Jennifer. I saw you. This is Jennifer's Jennifer Dub Dub hey. WW. Now, Jennifer, uh, you can see the Irish flag guitar in the corner. She won that from sharing this show publicly back in March. She's got the little Kanjo in front there that she's uh, she's got from us. I know she's bought some Kanjo songbooks. Uh, she's a regular player and contributor to this whole thing and this giddy laylee that you see she bought after winning a 50 gala dips gift certificate from us for sharing the show so if there's if you don't think there's value in sharing the show perhaps you could reconsider well she's a multi time yeah. winner yeah won the guitar won yeah. she's winning it all you got it yep she's fun, not the fun fact about that guitar you know when you look down at it the green is on the left when you're holding it and on the flag of Ireland, the green is on the left. Hmm. Everybody looking at it from out in the audience, the orange is on the left, which is actually, I believe, the flag of Papua New Guinea, oh. or, or one of the African <laughs> Guinea nations there. So, no idea. Fun fact. Fun facts. They are fun Somebody facts. Somebody put the sticker on upside down. <laughs> So Jennifer writes in about this giddy lately that she had never built anything like this before, so she was nervous. But after a few small disasters, that she writes, it all came together and it sounds great. Thank you, everyone at CB Giddy, and thank you, Jennifer Dub Dub, for sharing that because I think that's really cool. Yeah, and I Dub Dub. and I'm really glad that you continue to not only watch and share, but you enjoy these things that you that you get you know throughout this whole thing. So thank you, Jennifer. And I'm almost done. Bear with me. Jason G's next. I saw you out there, Jittery J. Jason G's got this rad thing. He's got a, a little hobo fiddle action. Ooh. He's still experimenting. Now, if you've been watching the Giddy Gang show and seen Walk Corner a few times, you'll know that Jittery J, Jason G, has uh, 
kind of broken out into the louvered, I don't know what it's called, but the, this louvered fretboard, he refers to it as the, uh, the jitterboard. He's still experimenting with the jitterboard. jitterboard. And I know, again, on a mobile device, it's tough to see that image, but uh, still exper experimenting with the jitterboard, a fretless fretted fretboard. Uh, I, that I know, right? Jittery, 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 jittery. <laughs> can't, I can't even do it once. And Jason writes that our own Ben Giddy Baker suggested I try the jitterboard on a hobo fiddle, and I had to agree. Making individual angled planes was a lot easier on a shorter scale. Uh, this hobo fiddle, or jitter fiddle, jitter fiddle, as he's been calling it, also features Shane Spiel signature tuners, genuine CB Giddy hobo fiddle strings, and a 1930s parlor style tailpiece, which, by the way, was the easiest string mounting he's ever done. Ooh. Yes, Jason G goes on to write that he highly recommends those uh, 1930s parlor style tailpiece that he got from CB Giddy Craft Supply. We yeah. make those here. Um, I've got a shortened version of that that I've been using on my hobo fiddles that I hope to be able to make available soon. Nice. It's not as deep. You know, the regular ones are deeper. It's... All right, I gotta go. All right. Now, if you stick around for a little bit later in the show, not only will you uh, hopefully hear Drew F's tennis racket guitar, but you may also hear the jitterboard hobo fiddle in action because <clears throat> you folk have been submitting videos to us. So thank you. If you have something that you've built and something that you want to play or some of the things that you want to share, feel free to send a little video. Now, I've gotten these videos off of Riv uh, the link that... Good stuff. Share the videos. Thank you. Now, next up, Greg T has for us his G-Bass kit. Uh, which I love the little Explorer-styled uh, electric guitar type uh, paint job on it. Now, Greg T. writes, this is my g base kit painted with Krylon spray paint and tongue oil on the neck and fretboard. Sounds like a lot of work. Had a lot of fun with it, and I bought a little bass amp to go along. Now, this next sentence is key because I've read this in every single review of the g base kit that has been submitted to our website, and that is some version of this next sentence. The kit was very easy to build using the detailed instruction book. The detailed instruction book and the entire design by this guy to my left, who may be off camera, Can't um, me. is is Ben Giddy Baker, and it's just an awesome kit. So I tip my hat to you, sir, and I tip my hat to you, sir, for building such an awesome looking base. And uh, thank you very much for sharing that with us, Greg T, and for the kind words. He writes that he's fairly new to CBGs, and there are some so many rabbit holes to follow with this hobby. The kit approach keeps him, Greg T, from chasing too many rabbits. And I really appreciate that perspective. I, I hadn't really thought about it that way. It's 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 a nice, not only is it a nice entry level type thing, or as Rick Green, Rick G, our, another friend of ours, has written that it keeps him in, in the, the building game because he's physically unable right now to do a lot of cutting and sanding and songs, so he's using our kits. And Greg T's like, you know what, there's just so many things I could be doing. This way I know I can get one thing and make it and enjoy it. And I really appreciate you sharing that with, it, with us, Greg T. Last up! Jimmy C, longtime stalwart and true cigar box guitar member and friend of CB Giddy, also has a G bass that he oh. bought and painted here. And he, as usual, a wonderful story. Thank you very much, Jimmy uh, C, for sharing this. Early this spring, writes Jimmy, my friend who played bass in our little circle of musicians passed unexpectedly. His first name was Kenny, his last name started with a G, so naturally I called him Kenny G. Since you guys at the Giddy Works have introduced us to the G base, I was inspired to build one and dedicate it to our own Kenny G. Thanks for all the great music, pal, and thanks to the Giddy guys for giving me a platform from which to speak. And thank you, Jimmy, because I think that's really cool. And that is... Bob Corner, thanks for hanging out. Good work out of you, Glenn. Hey, that was some good stuff this week. Yeah. I uh, I saw, uh, you know, that white color stencil type. It it's, reminds me of the that one Shane built. You know, his inspired by Harmony. He's saying all these are inspired by Harmony, which may be true, but that's uh that's very cool. I like that style. Hmm. Uh, there was a question from our own Jim Burt, Jim Burt asking whether there would be a Giddy Gang show a week from today, which it's still hard for me to wrap my head oh, around Black this. Friday. Is Black Friday. That's a great question. Uh, I think I saw Mr. Cigar Box Nation Shane Spiel offer to do the show next week. Going to hold you to that, Mr. Spiel. Appreciate that. Absolutely. That's awesome. You'll <laughs> be busy. We'll take, the week, we'll take the day off next week. So, uh, yeah, there will be a Giddy Gang show from Casa Spiel. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Very good. Indeed. Yeah. So right now, um, unless you got something to uh, 
to add, I'm going to step out to the printer because what I'm going to do is actually start a print job and then we'll come back to it a little bit later. Okay. So, uh. We can start with one of those videos. Well, I'll get, I'll get it started and then we'll go to it later. So, all right. Ready? Here I go. It's a long run, folks. Da -da -dun -dun. Oh, hey, are we there? All right, technology is a wonderful thing, folks. So from the newly relocated uh, Giddy Print Shop, we've got the new UV printer, which prints directly on not just box panels and not flat panels, but other stuff too. So you can see behind me here, that's the wrong way. You can see behind me here some of the boxes I've been printing, the flag series, um, tattoo art, other artwork. Directly on to paint can lids. Here's a, 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 a gear head. Pieces. An old a, a, a sun symbol printed directly on the metal. Very durable, doesn't Printed resonator paint lid cans coming soon. Got done some work on. Uh, signs with different artwork and then the actual printed this is an actual Fuente uh, double chateau box uh, with the artwork whited out and then with the artwork printed right on so what I want to do is start a new print here you see on my screen I know it's probably a little small but I've got an image of a Lamborghini a red Lamborghini on there because my boy Kieran is here today it uh, it's a snow day up here in New Hampshire. So I had to bring the boy. Over. So here's the image of the Lamborghini I want to print. Get this set here. I've got my box loaded in here, pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to feed this in and hit print, and then we'll come back out a little bit later in the show and show you the result. So I'm just going to mash a button here, turn on a thing, and hit go. All right, we'll be back out here in just a minute. I think we've got a video uh, to share with you right now. See you shortly. Jason, that was a very short. I was no, expecting it to be a little bit longer. <laughs> demo. He's like six seconds. Like whoa! All right, ah, well, that was a run back from the printing division of CB Giddy yeah. there, and that's not the printer you hear in the background. Real quick, I have, if I may, uh, Matthew Simpson, Magic Daddy, was asking about what people have for an opinion on protective eyewear. Glasses, uh, goggles, what's your deal? Janice Wilson-Hughes kindly contributed with the flip-down face shield. Uh, those are nice, complete coverage. Yeah, it goes a long way. Yeah, Matthew Simpson recently had a run-in with some uh, stuff in the eye. Not good. Not good at all. They only get two. Uh, so, so, yeah. Got to protect them. Uh, so, we wanted to talk a little bit about the what Shane did out there at Spiel's Tavern last weekend. Yeesh. Um, do we have some photos lined up? Do we know what to say about said photos when they come up? Not really. Yeah, well, we're going to wing this. So, the, uh... so if you don't know, Spiel's Tavern is the family business of Shane's family. His dad runs Spiel's Tavern there in New Alexandria, Pennsylvania. Um, and there is a photo of the outside. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Shane, but I think his grandfather started it. 
and his, now his dad runs it, and every time Shane shows up, his dad tries to give him the keys and like says, "Take this, <laughs> take this bar, <laughs> please." Um, but one of the cool things they have live music there all the time. But Shane has set up his cigar box guitar museum there inside Spiel's Tavern. You can see a little bit of it there. That looks like the original Macanudo mm. uh, cigar box guitar that Shane has quite literally played the hell out of. <laughs> there is no hell left in that guitar because he's played it right out of it. Um, but Shane, you probably, most of you already know this, is that uh, he is kind of a rabid, rabid? Uh, collector of historic guitars and handmade musical items. He, he has, he, he scours eBay and, and often can't help himself from bidding on anything that gets posted. So he has accumulated quite a collection of antique uh, handmade guitars, many of which are now housed there on the walls of Spiel's Tavern. There's one of his recent acquisitions, that trom or no, that saxophone mandolin uh, thing that he bought, and boy, his wife is a, a saint of a woman. <laughs> he just mm. keeps buying all this stuff. I'm not sure I could get away with it, but it's really awesome. The collection he has accumulated and reworked that display there in Spiel's Tavern down there in Pennsylvania. I haven't been there yet, he tried to talk me into going down last weekend. I just had too much going on. I wish I could have gotten there. The day will come, Shane Spiel. The day will come. And the pictures were, I believe, is it Pornish Studios? Yeah. Yeah, it came up from Texas to, yeah. uh, to see the yeah, museum. Yeah, all the way from Texas came up. Jim Morris and his wife, uh, Kim, were there. It was uh, Uncle Greg, the Uncle Greg, who is Reverend Peyton's uncle, was there, who builds the guitars for Reverend Peyton. Uh, the drive from here would be over nine hours. It's only a two and a half hours from where I'm from in Ohio, turns out, but a little bit longer from New Hampshire. So, didn't make it down. Uh, but it looked like Shane did a, a show down there on Saturday night. I think did a couple of, he did a couple of live broadcasts from down there. So, good times. Good stuff. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, set, taking the time and investing... The capital and the money into creating a cigar box guitar museum like that on public display that's that's cool stuff that's the kind of long range long game stuff that uh, builds yeah. the foundation for the future to help people discover these things yeah well good stuff and I just Jim I Jim Burt roll tide I saw you, I saw you ask a question now how do you submit the videos so, and I don't want to derail us here, but I think that's a great question. If you have something you'd like to share with the Giddy Gang show, and therefore we share with you, and yes, we can use them as transitions, so to say. And, yeah. And first of all, Jason, your video wasn't too short. It was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but regardless of how short or long, it may behoove you to make it slightly shorter, not shorter than Jason's, but just don't go on for necessarily for 10 minutes. Um, but a video of whether you have a how-to, again, something you want to uh, share uh, a build or something that you're playing that w on your build, or even if you just want to say hello to the, the, the larger yeah, community here. Yeah, fine. we love the shout out thing. But um, to answer your question, Jim, sending a video file, not the link to, a, I know this is going to be somewhat complex, but don't send a YouTube clip. Yeah, we can't download, can't, we can't run YouTube videos we live need, on our show. Like it, it, the file of the video. So if you, have, if you want to download the file and send that to us somehow or upload it to Dropbox, which is what Ron Lutz Ron did. Ron Lutz. And we're going to, Ron L, we have a video, not this week, I don't think, but next week or sometime soon from Ron L. He uploaded it to Dropbox. We download it. Yep. Google Drive. Google we Drive. download it. Um, but if you just post, like if you send us a link, like, hey, I, I, I posted this on Facebook, we unfortunately can't use that link to then play it here. We actually need a the, the thing, the file, the, the thing the video is. It dot MP4 or dot MOV generally is. Or AVI or, yeah. or yeah. We want to set a max length of or anything or like one to two minutes or one to two minutes would be ideal. Three kind of as a upper limit. Um, we're gonna be I think running one later today that might break that rule. And Janice Wilson Hughes, thank you. Email it to support at cbgitty.com. That's again, that's support at cbgitty.com. Thank you, Janice. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. And we are getting now into what? Burr. We did part one of the Drew printer. F. Drew F's racket, tennis racket guitar. You Let her roll. All right. <laughs>
was cool. <laughs> Sounds Very cool. cool stuff. Sounds good. Uh, Shane did a, a broadcast, was it yesterday or the day before, specifically focusing on weird and oddball mm -hmm. instruments that he has in his collection. I, I think the tennis racket, uh, construction hat, <laughs> guitar, that, that's, that's cool. That's pretty weird and wild. I like it. <laughs> Making music, you know, that's what it comes down to. Making music out of things that were never meant to make music or have a voice. You know, sometimes just partly for fun to see if it will it work. Can right. you make a playable guitar out of a tennis racket and a, a hard hat? Turns out, yes. Yes, yes you can. Yes, yes. yes, you can. And uh, Drew F. did. So kudos to you, Drew F. Um, I think it's about time. Oh, Nick was looking at me with intent and, and uh, nothing. He got nothing. All right, so it's time to announce the winners uh, from last week's show for sharing this show publicly on Facebook uh, so that we can see that you have shared it. Four winners, each of which will get a $50 gift certificate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So are you ready for the names? I'm ready for the names. Four people. Here they are. Starting with the first one. Is it me? It is not, <laughs> Nick Lanciano. It is Mr. Sean Clark. Sean Clark is winner number one. Now, just a quick reminder, if you hear your name here or if you know who these people are, let them know. Send a message to the uh, Cigar Box Nation Facebook page via Facebook Messenger, and we will get your prize to you. Second winner, number two, is... Rusty Taylor, the man hey. himself. Whoa. Rusty Taylor down there near Atlanta, Georgia. All right. $50 gift certificate. Not his first time winning, but it has been a while. Number three, our good buddy, <gasps> Gary Hansen. Hey. Out there in Mount Morris, Michigan. Very cool. Gary Hansen has won himself a $50 gift certificate. Awesome. And finally, Stevie Ray Dixtra. Dykstra. Dykstra. Stevie Ray Dykstra is winner number four. Congratulations nice. and thank you to all of you who take the time yeah. to share this show around Facebook. The goal of which is always to try to spread the word, not to, about us, but about about these. That anyone, anywhere can be an instrument. Be that, that you've shared it if you share it publicly. So in which case, we use Facebook as that platform to create a drawing for you to just win stuff and it's our way of saying thanks so thank you for sharing this show publicly on facebook awesome i had it right up until i had to do it for real well the reason i'm stalling folks oh so the printer isn't oh. done yet. Well, don't we have a... Yeah, uh, we Nick have has a... Video. We have that, that longer one. If you want to yeah, we got another video for you, folks. This show ain't over. All right. Rumors yeah. of our demise have been greatly exaggerated. This one is Hugo D, I believe. Hugo D. Is it... Uh, he's from Canada. I don't know which... which yeah, and he has got a... I can't remember, but he, he had a great story to share with this video in text. Uh, that I wish I had in front of me. We don't, but I, I just, if you're out there, Hugo, uh, this was really exciting stuff. I'm glad that you shared it. And he was, he had a very personal story to share with us as well. And so, uh, but Nick has a great video for you. Hi, everybody. I'm just doing this video just to show you uh, what I made with the hardware that I uh, order at CB Giddy. Um, wow, first of all, I made this little amp with uh, barn wood. And um, there's, a, this is a, a two channel, two channel amp. I got one here, one channel with two speaker. And I got another amp, a second channel with those two speaker, two different uh, jack so I can plug two uh, two cigar box or two guitar and on this channel I had the tone CB uh, Giddy just sell uh, a tone control that you can put on your cigar box or your guitar but I decided to, to put it here on the amp so I got this little amp 
and I made this fuzz box. I call it the fuzz box because uh, I don't have enough room to write Psycho Nub because this is the Psycho Nub from CB Giddy. So uh, there's five, five positions. The first one it's a bypass and as you go to the five it's more overdrive more overdrive and even at five it's kind of fuzz you know and uh, by the way excuse my uh, english because uh, i'm from montreal i'm french canadian from montreal and what i made to play with this beautiful things i made i made this all the gear on this it's from cb giddy too so i made i don't know how to call that it's not a guitar because it's only a three string instrument and it's not a cigar box because it looks like a guitar so uh, i don't know how to call that by the way it's the first instruments that I made by myself it was uh, this was uh, maple 4x4 four four that I found in the scrap yard so uh, it's like a telecaster um, tin line I bought a snake oil pickup from CB Giddy it's the set you know the the neck and the bridge pickup I got here the toggle switch and uh, it sounds like hell man let's see it so here it's clear <laughs> Magic, magic bottom here. to build this so I'm going to have to spend a lot of time to practice how to play this so thank you very much CB Giddy and um, see you soon bye all right well we're back here from the CB Giddy printing department and the printer has finished if you missed that part of the show basically I'm showing off the new box printing method we have here at CB Giddy. I apologize if this video hangs or gets blotchy. If you notice, I'm trying to move as little as possible to keep it from doing so. So we started with an image of a red Lamborghini here on the screen, loaded the box into the printer, and now here it is, the printed Lamborghini right on the box, and this is a strong, durable, ink like a plastic type of ink. I'm not exactly sure what it is but it's a very durable as strong as any uh, paint job would be on there right on the surface of the box so these are now available not this Lamborghini I'm not even sure uh, this one's for my boy actually uh, but you can get these printed boxes we've got 30 different stock images uh, that you can choose from on cbgiddy.com. You can also, there's a separate listing, upload your own 
image, a family photo, graphics, uh, a vacation photo, your kids, anything you want, as long as it's not a trademarked, copyrighted image, we can print on these boxes. And I showed you earlier with printing directly on our paint can lid resonator cones which you can then, of course, use in a paint can resonator guitar. Now this is one built from our kit, our Tin Pan Alley kit. So I'm just going to this in live here on the show. Thankfully, when Nick built this demo model, he didn't glue in the paint can lid. Might, might work, might not. Nothing else, you get to see me flail about. <laughs> and again, I apologize if the video is hanging. So there we have, I put it in upside down, can you believe it? All right, I'll be left-handed for a minute. There we have a completely different look for this uh, undec otherwise undecorated Tin Pan Alley Kit. Uh, available very soon on cbgiddy.com. A lot of tune, I don't think I have the bridge in the right place. So anyway, good, fun stuff happening here at CB Giddy. All right, heading back into the studio. Anyway, I didn't say anything important during any of that. Apparently, I keep forgetting to press buttons. Yeah, I didn't say anything important. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Station TV. <laughs> hey, 
we go. Well, thank you all for tuning in. We will uh, not be here next week. Nope. Mr. Shane Spiel taking next week's show. Well, he did not totally commit. He he oh, he's, he's committed. <laughs> he might not know it yet, but he's in. <laughs> Happy holiday, everyone. Yeah. Don't too much. I still can't believe Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is yeah. on Thursday. <clears throat> How the hell did that come in? Turkey Day! Good Lord. Time just zooming by. Mm. Zoom by. Yeah. All right. Well, I suppose we should shut things off here <laughs> like any this. minute now.